Ask your neighbor, are you okay? I'm not asking whether the country is okay. I'm asking you, are you okay? Ask your neighbor, are you okay? Can we have church this evening? I say, ask your neighbor, are you okay? Tell the person, I'm not asking about the country. Are you okay? Because you can be in a country that is not okay and you'll be okay. Did you hear what I said there? Don't let that the country is not okay affect your okay. Because it can affect your okay. But I thank God I'm okay. I said, I thank God I'm okay. I'm, gr- I'm grateful. I hope you know that when you keep showing up every Wednesday, every Sunday, you are beating the average. Every time you keep showing up, you're beating the average. And may the Lord honor you. May you have enough every time to move. May you have enough to move. May, 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 the Lord, may the Lord honor you in such a way that you will not be stranded. Amen. I pray for somebody here, you will not be stranded. Amen. I pray, I pray for a very present help in the time of trouble. Amen. When you need it, you have it. I pray for somebody here. When you need it, you will have it. You will not be stranded. Listen, your father is not stranded. You will not be stranded. God can never be stranded. And you have the DNA of God. You will not be stranded. It may look as if there's a situation, but you will not be stranded. At the end of it all, God will make a way. I pray God will make a way. There's somebody here praying, I agree with you. God will make a way. You are, you are praying and I'm also agreeing with you because you're looking at everywhere it's so bleak there's nothing you can see but hear the word of the Lord even if there's no rain and there's no wind this valley shall be filled with water tell your neighbor this valley shall be filled with water I don't need to see the rain I don't need to see the wind listen we have even gone past the season of seeing rain and wind now I don't even, I'm not looking out for the wind or the rain but this valley shall be filled with water. This pocket shall be filled with the necessary things that you be in the pocket. Oh, I said this valley shall be filled with water. I said your valley shall be filled with water. I said every space that you have that need to be filled will be filled with water. Water represents sustenance. I pray that God will sustain you this season. Oh, you didn't know. People are fainting. I said, but God will sustain you. People are dying, but God will sustain you. In Gera, people were dying. There was so much famine in the land, so this is not new. But God told Isaac, he said, stay in Gera. So in the same land, I'm about to create a location where specific things grow. It's not growing everywhere. Isaac didn't understand. He said, Lord, people are suffering. He said, no, so here. Because when the word of the Lord goes forth, it has the potential and the capacity to produce a manure around when your seed is dropping. That means there may be a seed near your seed. It's not about the seed. It's about the manure around where the seed is dropping. So God will place a manure in your own seed so that when you sow on a hard place, God will put his manure and your own seed will grow in the midst of the seed. You know what the Bible said that got me excited? I think I said it last week. I said there was so much fire and anguish and pain in Egypt. But Goshen. Everybody say Bogoshen. And I explained to you on, was it last week, I think? I explained to you that it wasn't about Goshen. It was about the people that were in Goshen. Goshen only got his name 
because you were there. You didn't hear what I said there. Your street is about to get his name because you are living there. <laughs> Your tribe is about to be recognized because you are part of that tribe. No, you didn't hear what I said. I said your company is about to be lifted because you are there. Pastor, where are you getting that from? Very simple. Pharaoh said, no, Potiphar said, I have now learned by experience that everything I put in the hand of Joseph yes, prospers. <laughs> if you remove Joseph from the equation, no prosperity. You bring Joseph back to the equation, prosperity. So that means because of certain people, God blesses certain places. Because of Abraham, my servant. Oh, there's something called because of Abraham, my servant. In the name of Jesus. Some of you here, I'm praying that because of you. Oh, because of you. I'm praying that because of you. I'm praying that because of you. I'm praying that because of you. Because of you. Because of you. God will bless this land because of you. God will bless your family because of you. God will bless your business because of you. God will bless that marriage because of you. God will bless your son, your daughter because of you. God will bless your husband because of you. It's a very prophetic covenant word. Because of Abraham. Because of Abraham. I will bless Isaac. I will bless Jacob. I will bless Israel. I'm not looking at what they've done. Because of Abraham, my friend. We caught a covenant this evening. This is not a covenant service. We caught a covenant this evening with Jehovah that everywhere you are is hallowed. 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 For the Lord will recognize you and the Lord will bless your seed. Church, let me announce to somebody here, I know you don't believe with where you are that anything can happen. But that is the excitement of God. For the Lord will surprise you. And you will have to pinch yourself again. <laughs> I might be one sitting here. Yes, sir, you're the one, sir. Who brought you here? The Lord thy God. He said, I will lift up the poor from the dust and from the dungheel and I will place him among the princes of his people. It means that when you are sitting beside another prince, you'll be wondering, what am I doing here? That's the governor of the state sitting beside, what am I doing here? <laughs> what am I doing here? For it is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our hearts. Put your hand together and give God praise. Tell somebody he's marvelous in our hearts. <laughs> The, the, Lord, the Lord's doing is about to hit your house. The Lord's doing. Hey, the Lord's doing is about to hit your house. Get ready for the Lord's doing. The Lord's doing is about to hit your house. And the people who join you to praise God, the Lord's doing is about to hit your house. Lord, thank you for the Lord's doing. It is possible for a house to inherit good news every day. It's possible. Yes, sir. There's no way it's written that you must have bad news in between. No way. Every day. It is possible. Even to an extent that when a bad news is coming, the Lord will walk all things. It's possible. I don't feel like blessing somebody before I jump into it. That's what I felt like. I just feel like blessing somebody. I'm praying for somebody here. The Lord will grant you dominion over finances. Yeah. The days of riding average is over. I'm praying that the Lord, even it doesn't matter whether you are old or young, I'm praying that the Lord will bless you with finances. Yeah. The Lord will teach you. The Lord will teach you how to, how to ride. Yeah. To ride above the spirit of mammon. Yeah. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. You will not get to a point in your life anymore that you will be stranded. No, no, you will not be stranded. No, you will not be stranded. Jesus Christ was carrying 
two CBNs with him. Two CBNs. Central Bank. He was carrying it everywhere. Let's call it CBK. Central Bank of the Kingdom. Jesus had Judas carrying the purse. Limited. Because when you have a man carrying your purse, it's limited. They will steal from it. The investment will go bad. But Jesus now had another resources that is unlimited. To an extent that when he needs money, he can call a fish. Fish, where are you? I'm around Suluri, please. We need to pay tax. And a fish will arrive with a specific amount. Have you thought about it? Even if I'm the one Jesus sent to go and meet the fish, I'm just imagine if I'm the one Jesus sent to go and catch a fish, then I'm catching the fish. Yeah, I'm a fisherman, so I understand fish, so I catch fish. Jesus now said, open the mouth of the fish. There's enough. When they asked for tax, I sent an angel to drop your tax, my own and your own, to put it in the mouth of a fish. Because the river, you know, the river is closer to us. I would have said, give it to the lion to bring. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know. You don't know how God operates. No, a lion could have. But since you are a fisherman, I think it's faster for you. Because you may see a lion around. <laughs> you may not want to say, lion, open your mind. Let me take coin. You know. I said, no, no. Get a fish. The one you are familiar with. I'm about to open your eyes. Your familiar becomes your miracle. So what you're familiar with, I want to show you there's a miracle in it. Don't get familiar with your miracle because some of you are too familiar. So some things you call common, it's actually uncommon because God can turn it. So God sent Peter to go to what he's familiar with, to catch the fish he's familiar with, to meet what he was not familiar with, to open the mouth of a fish. You know, it doesn't take normal sense to be doing that. You pick a fish, then start opening the mouth. Because somebody sent you that there's money inside. You know, you know something will be wrong with you. How many of you know that prank that some people play where they will go to a tree? They will put money there, they will not be shaking it, they will not be taking money. Have you, have you seen those pranks before? Then they will see somebody, somebody will just be sitting and wondering, ah, somebody and money they fall. You, you know, you know, you, you know the first thing is you go from normal to abnormal. Because normal is to say what's the reason doing. Ah, the person pick money, pick money, ah. And but you now switch. Ah. You know you were normal before. You now go to abnormal because it's abnormal to think money is growing on the tree. You now see a normal man behave abnormal. He's not be now jumps to the tree and start looking, <laughs> start looking for money from the tree. He now discovered that it was a prank. Now, but in reality, in reality, and I God sent Peter to get a fish and remove money from the mouth of the fish. Guess what, church? The money was enough for him and for Peter. He said, go and pay. <sighs> it supplies my needs. It supplies my needs. <laughs> According to his riches <laughs> and glory, he will always give you enough. <laughs> he supplies my needs. Okay, this is a prayer I want to pray for the next people. Prayer is coming. If you are in debt and you have been hoeing, for a long time. This prayer I'm about to pray is a prayer that I'm going to trust God for forgiveness. However, the forgiveness will be that you will not go back and return to it. If you go back, something worse will happen. So I'm about to pray. Father, I pray for anyone here that's in a serious debt and that thing is seriously affecting that person, affecting their lives, affecting their work. Something is wrong somewhere. Father, I pray for them. Lord, I ask for favor. I ask that there will be, either somebody will rise up and sort it out or that thing will be canceled. Lord, let there be a news. Before we return here next week, let somebody have a news that pastor, my debt has been sorted in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Tell someone, say congratulations. congratulations. No, look at the person one more time. Say congratulations. 
people always wonder, Pastor, why are you always saying congratulations? You don't know why. It's a prophetic word. That means there's something I'm going to congratulate you on very soon. Tell someone, say congratulations. congratulations. That person, relax, congratulations. Relax. There's something you're going to dance for very soon. Let the person know that. There's something you're going to dance for very soon in the name of Jesus. Look at the person and say congratulations. congratulations. Whether it's for your marriage, congratulations. Whether it's for your child, congratulations. Whether it's for your housewarming, congratulations. Whether it's for your new car, hallelujah. Some of you will drive a new car next year. Yeah. Next year, you have waited too long. A new car is coming next year. No, you're going to drive a new car next year. You have waited too long. You will drive something new next year. You will drive something new next year. I'm telling you. Yes, listen, everything is season. There's a season of BRT. There's a season of bus. There's a season of Uber. There's a season you're not beginning to move to drive your own car. There's a season of Tokumbo. There's a season of third grade. There's a season of in between the grade. There's a season of uh, in and out. There's a season, but there's a season of tear rubber. A season where you enter a car and say, ah, it's smelling well. <laughs> there's a season for that. So listen, yes, you may be looking at us and say, ah, why are they talking about material stuff? No, we're not talking about material stuff. We only understand the scripture. That after you have suffered a while, the Lord will say to you, some of us have suffered a while. Tell somebody I have suffered a while. Listen, I'm not just jumping into it. I've also suffered. Uh -huh. Tell the person I have walked too. I have walked. I have walked. Uh -huh. Tell the person I have entered bus too before. Uh -huh. Why? So that when you see me driving now, you just say, see them, see them, see them, see them. Tell your neighbor, we are them, we are them, we are them, we are them. <laughs> No, Robert, you need to say this thing because people will not know that you have suffered before. People will never know that you have jumped mold before. I have jumped mold I have fell out of mold before. Uh, you didn't know? I jumped a mold and I slipped. I have almost... Huh? Mold Ah, uh, come on. Why people are entering now is good. It's called BRT. Those days, it was mold There was no AC. Everything can hang your... Anything can tear your clothes. You can just be going and uh, something in the mold will just pull your clothes. You go back home again. So we have suffered before. I have entered a bus before where everybody was cramped in the bus, but you must get home. <laughs> I, have, I have entered a transport before and, and you are wondering... They've just stolen your money. I, I, and you are looking inside the bus like this. Ah, Mala, you might deliver. No, no. We have, we, have, we have experienced that before. So it's not, So when we are preaching here, people always think, people when we preach here, they say, ah, Pastor Mano, Pastor Mano, ah, 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 ah. You need, come and suffer what we suffer. You know what Paul was saying? Paul said, listen, I don't understand what you guys are saying. I have suffered more than you all. Paul was saying that. He made them understand, oh, you are seeing Paul now operating in dimension of grace. You don't know what he has suffered. Many times he was shipwrecked. No, he was shipwrecked. Uh, Pastor, you know, uh, he was shipwrecked. He was inside the ship. The ship was abandoned. He was in between. He was in the sea. And he was there, shipwrecked sometimes. He was hungry, not fasting. Hungry. That means that he trusted God. Lord, give me food. Food did appear. Ah, you mean that Paul? Yes, that Paul. The one that raised the dead. Yes. He suffered. Paul suffered. Do you know that Paul, all of us are always saying Paul, Paul was not calling food though. Paul didn't wake up in the morning and say, hey, breakfast, alive in heaven. No, the Bible said Paul was a tent maker. Paul was a hard worker to understand that he was working and he's like, hey, come, come, come. All of you, all of you ministers that are always going around asking for people for money. Stop it, go and walk. He said, for let him that will not walk, let him not eat. That was where that scripture came from. You work. So we are hard workers. We work. I walk 12 midnight sometimes, 2 a.m. sometimes, 3 a.m. I sleep for three, four hours sometimes. My wife knows. Sleep. I wake up about <laughs> some of you, some of you that know me, you know I appear at midnight. <laughs> That's when I send messages to some of you. I walk in the night, walk in the morning, jump up. As I was coming here today, I was trying to do a proposal. Run somewhere, run there. We're working. We're doing the ministry, but we're working. But guess what? As we're working, God is working. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. What things, Lord? All these things. The things they are chasing about will begin to follow you. You don't need to follow them. It will follow you. That's why I don't trouble myself about those things because they will find you no matter what you go to. They will find you. Favor will find you. I was telling my brother, 
Brasso Depot. It's currently in Canada now. Something came up and he had to go to Canada. And I was telling him, I said, man of God, watch this. I said, as you land into that country, things will open. You will start be seeing some, some weird things. When he got there, he was just telling me weird things that was happening to him. I said, I knew what was going to happen. Because listen, God does not forget his own. You may be thinking that God has forgotten you. Oh, the day the rain will start pouring, you will be soaked in the rain. Even people will be wondering, is it just you? Ah, man, I'm blessing the city. Oh, I feel the power of blessing in the house tonight. Tell somebody I'm blessing the city. Oh, there's an anointing. I just sensing an anointing. Tell somebody I'm blessing the city. Oh, tell the person I am not a cursed person. I don't carry curse. I am blessed. I carry the blessings of God. Listen, if you attach yourself to me, you are blessed already. Woo! You are blessed by association by knowing me. Oh, I'm not talking, I'm, I, when I say knowing me, I'm talking about me now. You should be talking about yourself. All right? <laughs> Tell the person by knowing me, you are blessed already. <laughs> Robert, let the person know. I said by knowing me, you are blessed already. Sitting beside me is a privilege. You are blessed already. You are blessed already. What, what is God? Bible said the ghost costless shall not come. Where is it coming from? Right. It coming? Jesus died for us. He was hanged upon the cross. He said, curse is he that is hanged upon the cross. Jesus died for us. So why are you carrying what cause? From what who? From what, who? Who? Who father? Which mother? How? How? Come on, man. You don't have the DNA of your dad. You have the DNA of Jehovah. God is not cursed. God is blessed. Anything God touches, anything God touches is blessed. How many blessed kings and queens do I have in this house? You think it's over? It's not over until it is over. I might be going through hot stuff, but it's not over. Tell someone it's not over. Listen, listen, listen. The things may not be turning now, but I can promise you it will turn. Woo! I say it may not be turning now, but I can promise you it will turn. No matter the resistance of the devil, we are going to resist the devil. Oh, tell somebody say, I resist the devil. I resist the devil by faith. I resist the devil by the blood of Jesus. Come on. Do you know everything that is on your side? Maybe I should remind you. God the Father is on your side. Shh, park in the mate. God the Son is on your side. The Bible said he's seated at the right hand of the Lord, interceding for you. God the Holy Spirit is by your side, is inside of you. Angels who ministers as flames of fire, they are by your side. Oh my God. Cherubims are seraphim, they are on your corner. What are you talking to me? Goodness and mercy are hanging around you. Oh, then favor is all over your head. Then guess what? Guess what? Oil all over you. Oil all over you. Oil all over you. All of that. The demons may not know, but they are on my side. For if they are known, they will not have crucified the love of glory. Now, demons don't know, but they are on my side. God uses them as a tool. He said, man, are you ready to ride the waves? I said, Lord, I'm ready. Hey, demon, stir the water. Let there be a storm. He said, when they come in as a flood, he said, the Lord will raise. We need a flood for your standard to raise. Oh, you're not here. You're not here. Church, you're not here. I need flood. <laughs> Without a flood, how will standard go up? How much are they selling bread now? I don't eat bread again, so I don't know. How much is it again? How much is it again? Slight bread. Eh? 800. It's 1,000 naira. Jesus of my father. Bread is 1,000. Now, now, hear the word of the Lord. Stop hoping that they will reduce the cost. Stop giving yourself stress. Stop giving yourself stress. Stop hoping, our pastor, we are trusting God that one day bread will not be 100 naira. <laughs> Stop hoping. When the enemy push up the floor, standard, your money must accommodate it. If you were buying bread for 500 naira before, with your 5,000 naira that you had, 
Now they moved it to 1,000. There will only be a problem if as the flood is rising, your standard is not rising. Then there will be calamity. But as they raise the flood, man, listen, the people that know that bread has gone high are the people that don't have. <laughs> people that have, they will say, buy me bread. You see, when you say buy me bread, you know, you know those people don't go to find out, please, how much is bread? No, they just say, give me bread. <laughs> so when they say, give me bread, they just give you the ATM. They don't ask how much. Don't, don't, don't let the flood and the standard meet. If the flood push, standard goes. The flood push, standard goes. The flood push, standard goes. That's why scripture says, say, when the heat comes, we will not know. We will not know. Because you are a blessed child. Listen. You will not make me preach today. Listen. Except God is not in heaven. If you are hungry and there is no food and there is no body to help, God can send an angel to bring your food. That's how God operates you. Yes. Meaning he has checked every man available and nobody is available. Okay, I have checked man, no man. I have checked sister, no sister. God will release an angel and an angel will come to your house and say, I was sent with your name on it. <laughs> and that's a blessing with my name on it. <laughs> a mighty blessing with my name on it. A strong blessing with my name on it. It's coming my way. Oh, tell someone there's a blessing with your name on it. Oh, I feel like somebody standing up and telling another person, I said there's a blessing with your name on it. It's coming to your house. A new house is coming to somebody here. It's coming to your house. Listen, listen, a new car is coming to somebody here. Listen, in our time, we will celebrate your car. In our time, we will celebrate your house. No, you will enter that house. We will all enter with you. And we will pray with you. And thank God for you. And some of you, you will enter a new school here. A new school. Some of you will do your master's and you pay for it well. Whether by scholarship or somebody paying for it, you will do it well. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't even know how to enter this now. I'm so, I'm so feeling this, this grace and anointing. Yeah. And I feel like just pouring. It. I, I'm having a feeling of, I'm having a feeling of a father just pouring the blessing. How I wish I had, how I wish I had $10,000 now. Yeah. I, I say, how I wish. <laughs> I would have loved, I would have loved to just pull it out and say, everybody, come and take, receive in the name of Jesus. Not, not receive by just talking word. Receive, receive, receive. That's what I feel like doing. I'm telling you. And you know me, if I had $10,000 on me right now, I would have said, how many of us are here? I just say, well, okay, receive, receive, receive. Some people have just stayed there. Receive, receive, receive. They move. <laughs> Listen, why am I talking this way? It doesn't take God anything to bless. I'm making it look very common to you. Because you see, what you are dying of, what you are waking up, you are dying. It's it something little to God. Too small. Car. House. One day, God wanted to embarrass me. He just told me, say, he was teaching me about provision. Say, man, no. As wicked as your dad is, when you ask him for, for, for bread, he doesn't give you stone. When you ask him for fish, he doesn't give you salt. And I said, how be it me when you ask me for anything? Why would you think that if you ask me, I will hurt you? So you think I don't know in your heart that you want a car. But you know, you are too religious. So, so when you're doing your prayers, your heart is praying car. Your mouth 
He's praying, Lord, save the soul. But God knows your heart. He knows that it's card that your body is there. But you don't, you said, Lord, you know, I can't, I can't say it to you. No, no, no. He knows certain people who, who have tied themselves to material stuff. But he knows people whose their heart sincere. So sometimes and you're going and you're walking on the road and rain is beating you. You didn't plan it. And rain starts beating you and say, ah, Lord. I rubbish out of God. You just said it in your heart. And God saw it. God saw it. Immediately, God will initiate. It's like a frequency. And he hits into the heavens. Then the angels will start looking for the blessers. Then all of a sudden, you'll come into the heart of maybe Pastor Sam or Sister Obi or my wife or UK. You just drop into their heart. One day, you just be passing. And God just say, that car. Which one, sir? That one, mm. It's for that guy. And all of a sudden, you just say, Come. It's not a question whether he needs a car or not. It has come into your heart. Say, you need to come and pick something in my house. That's how God operates. God whispers people's names into people's hearts for a blessing. So why do you think he won't remember you? Why? 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 Ah, Lord, remember, remember. Lord, put, put, put the names of these people in the hearts of men. Put it in the hearts of their helpers. I'm going to curse the spirit of lack in this house. I'm going to curse that spirit that is always making you think, that will always make you think you are not enough. The spirit that's always think you can't meet up. I'm going to curse that spirit tonight. And by God's grace, we're going to anoint people. And by the time you are anointed, I'm trusting the Lord that anything that represents the spirit of lack that thing will be broken in the name of Jesus. Anything. Even if it is an association, that association will be broken. Maybe there's an atmosphere that has just been resting upon you without your knowing. I'm praying that as we break, as I pray over you, I'm praying that that thing will break in the name of Jesus. And you will attract divine favor. Like you've not attracted before you will attract divine favor like you've never attracted before in the name of Jesus. Now, some of you have never tasted favor before the way it should be. I pray that by this season, by this time next week, I'm praying that something that will cause favor to come will rest upon you as a person, will rest upon you as a family in the name of Jesus. Father, Father, I'm trusting you with the atmosphere that you've just initiated in our heart. And I'm praying for the oil of gladness. I'm praying for the oil of gladness to rest upon somebody here tonight. Listen, listen, I know you came to hear a word, but somehow I believe God wants to anoint somebody here. And I'm trusting that the Lord will anoint you. I'm not the one anointing you. I'm trusting that the Lord will anoint you. And he will give you the power to make wealth. He will give you the power to make wealth. In the name of Jesus. I am praying today that the Lord will do a new thing in your life. I'm praying today that the Lord will do a new thing in your life. Oh, I pray one more time. I pray that the Lord will do a new thing in your life. The days of struggle, the days of struggle, the days of struggle is over. The days of looking unto man, the days of looking unto man is over. You will not look unto any man again. It will look unto God and God only. If God will not do it, let no man do it. If God will not do it, let no man do it. You will not look unto any uncle. You will not look unto any pastor. You will not look unto any sister. You will look unto God, and because you look unto God, you will not be ashamed. Ah, I cause the spirits of shame in the name of Jesus. 
I curse the spirit of sin in the name of Jesus. I curse that spirit. I curse that spirit of disgrace. That spirit that tried to disgrace you when you are not supposed. Oh, come on. I break that hold. That hold, that hold, that infirmity that has been embarrassing the family. I break that infirmity. That infirmity that has been affecting the hopes. I break that spirit of infirmity that has been affecting your marriage. I break that infirmity. You have been hiding it, but I break it. I rebuke that spirit. I rebuke that spirit. By the blood of Jesus. I rebuke that spirit. Oh, pray the Holy Ghost for one minute. I rebuke that spirit. That spirit is not of God. I don't know where you came from, but I rebuke you. I send you back to where you came from. I rebuke you. I pull your root in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that spirit. That spirit is not of God. The spirit of struggle. It is not God. It is not God. I'm telling you, I bind you and I rebuke you. That embarrassment is over. That embarrassment is over. That embarrassment is over. I break you. Every time they bring the same story, every time they bring the same story, I break you. I break that spirit in the name of Jesus. I break that spirit in the name of Jesus. I break that spirit. That's not the spirit of God. I break that spirit, that spirit that keeps holding you back. Oh, daughter of Zion, oh, daughter of Zion, rise up. Daughter of Zion, rise up. Daughter of Zion, rise up. A kapate, a shenamineto, a sikala patapa, a shekrako, a daughter of Zion, rise up. Enough is enough. Daughter of Zion, rise up. A kapali kenemenoto, a sipe petilo, a shakatapa. You will not be disgraced. I said you will not be disgraced. I said you will not be disgraced. Oh, they've been laughing. They've been laughing. This time they will laugh with you. I said they've been laughing. I said they will laugh with you. It's your paper letter. I shall cut it. Push a bit. Push for a few minutes. Push for a few minutes with me. He came in out. And see Paul on the canon. He said, Ben, let him take it. And talk on the canon. Oh, Father, help me. Oh, Father, help me. Oh, Father, help me. Enough is enough. I will not be in this circle. This circle is broken. He came in out. And he came in out. 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 Oh, every of your child is favored. Every of your son has the spirit of excellence. He came in out. 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 Zyka, Zyka, Ariasata, Akalemen, Ketopo, Nokoto, Ayekete. Oh, come on, church. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Ah, I said, Nemeto, I see in the name of Jesus, enough is enough. The spirit of struggle, we break that spirit. We break that spirit. We break that spirit. We are not of this world. We are not of this world. Emmanuel, you are not of this world. Even though you are in this world. But you are not of this world. I say you are not. You don't belong here. You don't belong here. Your heritage is heaven. Your heritage is God. You don't belong here. La Patece. You carry the spirit of grace. You carry the spirit of the Father. You carry the spirit of the Father. You will not be embarrassed. You will not be ashamed. I cost that disgrace. He can make a tapacate. Shire! 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 Isaiah chapter 61. I, I'm going to, I want you to take this scripture. I'm going to run through it. Then press in the place of prayer. Isaiah chapter 61. I want you to understand it. This is a Messianic scripture about Jesus. Then he gave us a clear understanding of the benefits of his coming, his dying, and his resurrection. So if you want to understand your benefits as is related in the agreement or in the covenant, this is what you look at. The moment you see this, you can tap into what is available that you can press by it. 
So I'm going to read it. Then when we are, when you are anointing yourself or when you're putting the oil on your head, I want you to press along this line. Okay? All right. He said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me, talking about Jesus. He said, because the Lord had anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. Now, watch what he said he would do. He has sent me to do what? To bind the broken heart. So that's the first thing you must say. He has sent me to bind the broken heart. What that means is that when you are in our tribe, one of the things that is not permitted that you carry around is a broken heart. So he binds it. That means he heals those wounds in your heart. He binds the broken hearted. That's number one. Number two, what does he do? He proclaims liberty to the captives. That means if there's anything that has kept you in a place where your movement or your expression is restricted. He said he has set liberty on it. Number three, what? The opening of the prison to them who are what? Bound. So prisons will open. Whatever as or is standing as a prison over you or your family, as you lay hands on yourself by oil, if they say that this spirit of poverty has been coming from your great grandfather, by the laying hands of yourself on your head, we see that that prison uh, will be open tonight in the name of Jesus. Then number 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 four is that to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the year of His jubilee. To to proclaim the year of freedom, the acceptable year of His coming. And I said, and the day of vengeance of our God. People that have struggled the earth, people that have troubled us as a person, and the, the final end of death and Satan. He said, There will be a day of vengeance of our God. Then to do what? To comfort all who mourn. There will be a comforting, a comforting upon certain people. Then this way is getting me excited. This way is getting me excited. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. What that means is, listen church, some people are in Zion, but they are mourning. Zion is not the place of mourning. Zion is where we possess our possession. Zion is not the place of crying. Zion is not the place of defeat. Zion is a place of his presence. But look at what he said here. He said, what, do, what did he say he's going to give to them? To give unto them what? Beauty for ashes. I am prophesying on somebody here today. Something called beautiful will begin to rest upon you in the name of Jesus. Anything that represents beauty will begin to rest upon you in the name of Jesus. I said beauty will rest upon you in the name of Jesus. Ah, he said, he give unto them beauty for ashes. Then what? The oil. Of what? Joy. This is where I'm coming to. The oil of joy for mourning. And I pray for somebody here. Ah, the days of crying in the middle of the night. The days of crying privately. I pray in the name of Jesus, those days are over. I pray that the oil of joy will rest upon you in the name of Jesus. And I pray that the spirit of the joy of the Lord will rise inside of you in the name of Jesus. Now, now it's getting more exciting. And he said he will give you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. This is what he's saying. Oh, I don't have my jacket here. What he's saying is that when you sense heaviness, wear the garment. You will always be carrying your garment of praise. Anytime something wants to drop your heart in depression, wear your garment. You will always be carrying your garment of praise. I pray in the name of Jesus, everything that is depressing you, anything that is causing depression in your spirit, I pray today, I pray for a new garment. I pray that that garment will be removed. And I pray for the garment of praise all over you. In the name of Jesus, I come against the garment of heaviness. I come against the garment of heaviness. I come against the garment of heaviness. I come against the garment of depression. 
look at what that said. He said that they might be called trees of righteousness and the planting of the Lord. Ah, tell somebody the Lord will plant you this season. The Lord is the planter. You are the seed. The Lord is planting you. He said that he might be glorified. Next verse. Look at the next verse. This is where he's getting interested. This is where we step into the world zone. This is where we step into the favor zone. He said that why are you going to be the tree of righteousness? Why would the Lord be choosing and planting you that they shall build the whole waste? Anything that the enemy has stolen from you, anything that it seems that the cankerworm or the lukewarm has eaten, I'm praying that the Lord will give you double for it. I said, I pray that the Lord will give you double for it. There's somebody here, sickness has taken out of you. I pray that the Lord will renew your strength. There's somebody here, sickness took away from you. I pray that the Lord will renew your strength again. In the name of Jesus, you shall be strong again. I said, you shall be strong again. I said, you shall be strong again. Woo! He said, they shall raise up former desolations and they shall repair waste cities. How many repairers are we having here? What that is saying is that if there's anything dead around you, when you touch it, it will come alive. Everybody say, Lazarus come forth. Oh, anything that is dead around you or your family that is not supposed to be dead. Any business that is dead that is not supposed to be dead. You have become a repairer. You begin to bring them back to life. You begin to restore. You begin to restore. He said, he said, you shall repair the waste cities and the desolations of many generations. Woo! I told you the other time, I said God does not bless individuals. He blesses generations. So when he's blessing you, it's not about you. It's about generations. I pray today. I pray that you'll be a beginning of a blessed generation. Oh, I pray you'll be a beginning of a blessed generation. Ah, uh, this goes to your sons. This goes to your grandson. This goes to your great grandson. This goes to your great, 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 great grandson. He become a legacy in your family. You become the beginning of the great thing in the name of Jesus. I said you become the beginning of a great thing in the name of Jesus. Woo! This is where he's beginning to switch. You know, we've been praying just you. Now watch what goes on now. Watch what goes on. He said, and strangers shall stand and they will feed your flocks. Woo! Oh, hear the word of the Lord. People that know you not shall come out of their hiding places and they will say, how do we help you? They don't know your name. They don't know the name of your son. But they will just say, how do we help you? Strangers shall feed your flock. I said, strangers will do your bidding in the name of Jesus. People that are not in your tribe, people that are not in your religion, Muslims will support you. Oh, you didn't hear what I said there. I said, Muslims will support you. They will rise up and say, how do we help you? In the name of Jesus. He said, the sons of alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. Next verse, please. But you shall be named the priest of the Lord. Men shall call you ministers of our God and you shall eat riches of the Gentiles and in their glory shall you boast yourself. I think there's one more verse. For your shame you shall have double. For every shame you shall have double. If you lose one, three will appear. I said if you lose one, three will appear. God will restore back to you seven times what it seems as if you lost. In the name of Jesus, I said if you lose one, three will appear. I said if you lose one opportunity, three will appear. I said if you lose one opportunity, three will appear. I lost that job appointment. If you lose one, three will appear. If you lose one, three opportunities will appear. God will restore sevenfold. He said, if a thief be caught, he shall restore sevenfold. If a thief be caught. And the only thief we recognize in the scripture is the devil. He said, for is the thief 
and he has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But he will be caught, shall restore sevenfold. You see, when they come in one way, they will be expressing themselves in seven dimensions. I pronounce the day here, people that have lost things that you're not supposed to have lost, I don't know who you are, but God will restore. In this season of dominion, God will restore. And for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double. There's something called the double. Church, I just entered a new season. Follow me. I've just entered the season of double. Follow me. I just entered into the season of abundance. Season of double. Somebody here, you're going to be honored. It is called honor because if they look at you, you don't deserve it. There's somebody here. That's why it's called honor because you don't really deserve it. Yeah, and they're going to call you up in front of many. Song coming to my heart. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Heaven and earth adore Him. Angels bow before Him. What a mighty God we serve. One more time, sing it like somebody. What a mighty God.
remember the scripture you just read and stand on it right now and become a repairer of waste places. Please put up that scripture, please. I become a repairer of waste places. Oh, I become the three of righteousness. I'm free from every prison. Anything holding me down. The oil of joy for money from today. That you might be glorified in my life. I become the planting of the Lord. Beauty for ashes. I receive beauty now. I receive beauty for ashes. Thank you, Jesus. Beauty. I receive beauty for ashes. Thank you, Lord. I receive beauty for ashes. I receive beauty for ashes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. One more minute. If you have put your hand on your head, now lift it up and just thank the Lord and give him praise. Thank you. Just give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we want to thank you tonight. Lord, thank you because you know all our hearts here. Lord, you know our heart, all of us. You know our heart. And you know our struggle. But Lord, we bow before you today. And Lord, we are only asking you. That you do what you want to do with us. We're ready, Lord. Most of us that have been struggling, Lord, we're ready. There's been so much struggle, but Lord, we're ready. Let it begin. Lord, start with me, oh God. Lord, use me. Make me an example of your favor. Make me an example of your love. Make me an example of the double. Make me an example that you can really take someone and change them. Turn them around. Make me an example. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thanks for watching the Potter's House of Lagos Global Broadcast. For more information, please visit www.thepottershouseoflagos.org. You can also follow us on all our social media platforms to stay up to date with everything we're doing here in this ministry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.